Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, we follow Pigeon Supremo, Jeff Garrard, on the last night of the Roo shooting in February, down in Essex. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Right, here we are, it's the last Saturday of February and um, on, on at this place it'll be the last night for evening roof shooting and for me it's actually going to be the first night of the year just through situations and, and appointments and um, the odd trip after a bore meant I've happened to miss the first three Saturdays uh, when the wind was blowing, it was hooly, the sun wasn't shining perfect conditions for roof shooting. Uh, I've rolled up tonight uh, with my eldest son Josh on a windless sunny afternoon uh, to try and shoot a few pigeons uh, as they're coming into roost. Uh, today basically um, the wind uh, is, is an easterly wind which is very unusual for, for roost shooting on here. Um, I'm going to drop Josh off just over the way here and we're going to go down the bottom of the wood there and just going to have a look at the area see if we can find a, a bit of a brush somewhere try and work out where the pigeons are coming from to start with if we can and and then try and get underneath them um, the one thing that might be in our favour is that we this wood the bottom half of this wood hasn't been shot um, this year so I'm hoping that the pigeons are going to be a little bit lower than normal. Roof shooting, standard gear, got the Browning Maxis uh, three shot which is, is becoming my favourite um, pigeon gun. Uh, the Ely Pigeon Select, it's going to be a bit of a first for me and the, and the Pigeon Select is that I haven't actually used them roof shooting before but I'm pretty certain um, that they'll do the job and and just, just basic standard um, deer hunter camo gear. Uh, like I say, I mean, I've got the recon jacket on tonight and hopefully with the brambles and what little bit of greenery there is about, I can sort of blend in with it and, you know, making it not too much of a necessity to actually build a hide. I'm going to put Josh uh, just down the corner. There's a, there's a nice group of fir trees here, which um, later on in the evening, the pigeons will come into them, they, they do like a fir um, plantation uh, and I'm going to go down the bottom here, the bottom of the wood where there's another block of fir trees down the bottom there and we'll just see between us whether we can keep them on the move and have a few shots.
the boy. What was happening was the pigeons were coming up. Instead of coming into the woods, they were crossing in front of me. And sort of like, I was shooting, instead of shooting through the tops of the trees, I was shooting through the, a lot more branches. So I've just tried to get a bit closer to the wood, edge of the wood, to see if I can intercept them a bit in a clearer area, which is, it's worked so far. I've had a couple more since we've moved, so we'll just, the, there's a lot more pigeons beginning to move about now, so um, we'll just see whether we're in the right spot at the moment for the next sort of give it 10 minutes and then see what happens. If not, we'll just see if we can move again, for, get in the right spot. Right, well that's the end of it now. Uh, I've been staying about for the last 10 minutes and uh, haven't seen too much more come in. So I'm just going to have a uh, bit of a pick up, try and pick as many empty cartridge cases up as I can while it's daylight. Uh, one of the downsides of using an auto, especially at roof shooting, you do tend to spray them about a little bit, but while we've got a little bit of daylight, I'll uh, try and pick the rest of those up, pick the rest of the pigeons up and see what we've got when we get back to the truck. Well, that's the evening finished now. Uh, we've had a pick up. Um, I've picked up 22, and believe it or not, I've got three hanging up in trees, um, which are just out of range. Uh, I can't throw sticks or nothing up to, uh, to get them out. So all in all, I've picked 25, well, I've picked 22 up. Now I've got 25 down. What you got there, Josh? Uh, all together, I've got eight pigeons and uh, one crow, and I had two that just went back uh, a bit further back that I couldn't get to, so. Yeah, good, very good enjoyable, yeah. So all in all, really, I mean, we've had a good night. I mean, the last night of the uh, roof shooting as well, uh, and the wind, the weather conditions weren't the best for roof shooting. Um, you know, there was very, very little wind, there was bright sunshine to start with, and the pigeons were, were pretty high. Um, you know, you, you do need that wind when you're roof shooting to keep them as low as possible. You know, but tonight they were up there fairly high. So, uh, you know, I'm happy with the night. For the first night out this year, I'm happy with the evening. Um, uh, Josh is back uh, back next week to work. And uh, it's been great just to come down here for the weekend and have a last weekend with Josh. Don't very often do that because of his, his career. So it's nice just to have the, the last weekend with Josh and get him to have a few shots as well. Jeff there, making his mark at the pigeons in less than ideal conditions. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Shooters have a battle on their hands to save wildfowling on Finehorn Bay in Moray. 
A petition created by an anti-shooting group has called for a ban, but a counter-petition supporting wildfowling has now attracted 1,200 signatures. Local wildfowlers have made a number of attempts to meet and engage with the anti-shooters, but they've been turned down every time. Alex Stoddart from the Scottish Association for Country Sports said the anti-shooters have no empathy with established communities or understanding of local heritage and real-world conservation. Working dogs are a key part of the UK game fair, and it's not just Labradors and Spaniels. Show organisers have unveiled a full set of Terrier and Lurcher attractions, in partnership with the Coursing Crew and the Countryman's Weekly. There will be straight races, simulated coursing and a full Terrier and Lurcher show. The Coursing Crew's Paddy Weaver said he was looking forward to showing everybody what the dogs can do. Keep up with all the latest news at UKGameFair.com. The EU firearms law proposals could have a lot of unintended effects on law-abiding British citizens. That's the message in a new infographic published by Basque. Proposals to extend the ban on semi-automatic rifles will harm pest control, thereby endangering food security, while proposals to ban under-18s access to guns will affect training and responsible use. And the law could have negative effects on trade, heritage and culture. Many people who shoot have written to their MEPs to raise their concerns about the Commission's proposals. Rhino poaching may have dropped in South Africa last year, but in Africa as a whole it's continued to rise. At least 1,038 rhino were killed by poachers in 2015, bringing the total to 6,000 in eight years. The number of white rhino appear to have levelled off in Africa, while the black rhino is critically endangered. Keep up with rhino conservation news in Sporting Rifle magazine. And finally, heather burning on the moorlands is backed by science, it's official. A recent paper, set to be published in the Royal Society's journal, says the damaging effects of heather burning cannot be proven, and has told antis to lay off the unhelpful hyperbole. The paper also called out journalists for relying on press releases about the issue from campaign groups, without reading the original research or consulting an expert. The GWCT said it was time to accept that fire is a vital part of moorland management, and we should focus on learning how to do it well. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.